Peace, they say, is like fragrance which you can spray on others without having a portion in you. You're seeking peace, you must be ready to give peace. The very nature of Nigerians' creation and subsequent military rule, coupled with the seat side syndrome of our leaders, has consistently made conversation about peaceful coexistence almost an impossibility. But what if it's possible that we can actually sit down and agree on areas of peaceful coexistence and forge ahead thereafter? We are not unaware that such agreement and our step are needed to turn the wheels of our mutual suspicion of one another. I ask, will this skepticism, sustained by decades of conflict and failed promises, coupled with very unfavorable economic realities, ever allow us to agree to agree and agree to disagree? Like I always say, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. There's a marked crisis of confidence, not only between the people and the government, but amongst the various ethnic groups that dot the landscape of the once promising giant of Africa. This crisis is further amplified in recent times by the continuing protest on the key issues of corruption, nepotism, lack of transparency and insecurity in the land. There's also the palpable fear that the government, by their action and inaction, are either unable or unwilling to tackle most of the issues holistically adding fear to the mutual suspicion, agitations, unrest, and killings in almost all parts of the country. Today, while bandits are raining havoc and death on citizens of Kazare and other part of Kaduna State, and up not unanswered, Biafra agitators and protesters were arrested, shot at in some instances in the southeast, as government is rehabilitating some repentant Boko Haram members in the same northeast when much care is not even given to the victims of the havoc of the repentant warlord. Well, you would say same way, the kidnappers for ransom of yesteryears in the Niger Delta were compensated, granted amnesty, and asked to go and sin no more. It is true that government is always under pressure at every point with most of these problems, but the solution seems far-fetched because officials would rather focus on the latest situation rather than look towards a holistic approach that will be a long-lasting solution. Hence, despite seemingly altruistic efforts, kidnapping for ransom has continued unabated. Heather's attack on defenseless farmers is still prevalent. Even though government calls it farmers Heather's conflict, I wonder if you also agree that it's a conflict. The resultant effect is the intolerance from the two major religions and the major ethnic nationals pointing accusing fingers at each other. Where is the Nigeria of the 60s, 70s, and early 90s, when it was possible for the son of Mazi from Arochuku in present day Abia State to travel all the way to Wukari Bauchi State to attend Federal Government College? What happened to the Nigeria when the son of Kokori from Kokori Village in Delta State could walk into stationary stores in Lagos and get a job without someone asking him, Who is your father? We can get it back if only we are ready to ask the right question give the right answer, and not only point in the direction, but walk the right path. I would therefore advocate today that government should understand that justice, equity, transparency, and accountability, accountable government are the cardinal pillars that sustain the peace of any nation. It's not all the time that government should suppress protests, grievance, or genuine peaceful agitations. Rather, genuine effort at dialogue and a view of the problem from the solution-driven angle. For continued suppression or disregard of grievance could metamorphose in time to violent uprising. And that's why, for me, it's like a kettle waiting to boil over. For peace to take baby step is beyond rhetorics. All of us must collectively walk the talk and be ready to make sacrifice. That we strengthen processes and ensure accountability, not only for government officials, but every Nigeria born of a woman. But we must remember that my advocacy today isn't by any stretch of the imagination a magic wand or one solution fit all to a multifaceted problem, but rather a wake-up call to challenge the status quo, to think the impossible, connect with the leadership through consistent engagement in whatever form, take the first step no matter how wobble towards a mental adjustment needed to set us off towards a part of peace, unity, and progress. I'm just simply saying, let's begin to put our talk to action. Hmm. You know, uh, Libras, I, I agree with what you said. In fact, I'm, I'm impressed that you're so calmly 
reaching this out. This is a good week. He's calm. Oh, yes, I'm <laughs> reaching out. No, he's like he's a no mediator. Fire brimstone. But you know no. what it brought to mind, even though you did say it, so I'm not saying you didn't, is that song you referenced once. You know, everybody's crying out for yeah. peace and none is crying out for justice. for justice. But you did say, you obviously, the pillars. You know, but what I'm saying is, there's no way there's going to be peace in Nigeria until we get those pillars in place. Because even the reference you made to Southern Kaduna killings, and you know, even I, I know somebody who is on the ground there, and when they tell you their side of the story, it breaks your heart that you know, government officials, at least as far as they're concerned, that is by the governor there, has sent those officials, and they go and disarm the civilians. And then when the so-called Fulani headsmen come, they are like sitting ducks. And then when they are being attacked, those people are standing by, and when they call on them to defend them, they say, no, they've just been called to watch. So he was asking me as a journalist, can you not at least follow up that several of our, ch our children have been incarcerated, they haven't been released, but the Fulani headsmen get incarcerated, they get released. Is this not something factual a journalist can go and investigate? So for me, those things are injustices that will never die. It's like their blood is crying out for, for some kind of you know, recompense. Even yeah. Wale Shoinka once said that the fact that the president went and said live peaceably is not enough. You, where there is wrong, there must be you know, some kind of writing of that wrong. Well, yeah. Which is why I'm wondering, um, Libra said we can get it back. And I'm wondering inside of me, isn't it too late to get it back? No, no, uh, is it not? If it no. is not, uh, you also talked about engaging our leaders, leaders yeah. meaningfully. I hope so. Because it looks like Nigerians are just tired. It looks like but, they, but their, attentions are, their attention is divided in many ways now. Can we get it back? Yes, we can. We have, I, we have know, to believe. You know, <laughs> let, let me say that um, you cannot decree peace. That's what you I'm cannot, saying. you know, it's not something you pronounce. pronounce. It's yeah. like love. Love, they say, is action. It's not done by a uh, mecca saying to someone, oh, I love you. No, no, no. You have to do what is required of love. Love is a responsibility. Love is a call to Even action. It's a response to yes. something. And so when we talk about peace, it's not something a high government official say, let them go and live peaceably or let them, you know, be at peace. Mm -hmm. No. Like they say. Yeah. yeah. You have to find peace. Like the Cameroon-Nigerian peace, peace you, yeah. accord. You have to do what is required for peace. But let me also say that, you know, it is to me that the fact that we, we have a situation where um, our government, our structure of governance was born, there's a certain status quo we've entered into. We entered into it maybe... 60, 70 years ago. And, you know, every other thing is, it's like sitting on a treadmill and we're just moving. You see some movement, but we're not really going anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, the thing is that no one wants to get off that treadmill and do what is necessary. Yeah. So we are born in status quo. We love the status quo. And the, the fact of the matter is that, um, I guess people are afraid of the real change. Because the real change requires rigor, plenty of hard work, and, and plenty of vision to do what is required. And I'm, I'm, I'm worried that, um, you know, we're not ready for what we, we claim we want. Yeah. And then again, it looks like those who are peaceable, who follow the path of peace, end up getting nothing at the end of the day. Look at you, we're talking about the victims of the, the Southern Kaduna crisis. I'm looking at the people of the Cameroon, Nigeria, that border peace accord. What has happened to them um, years after? Is it right to be peaceable? I know it is. It is but now. can we not follow up this David, peace, you have the answer. This <laughs> path? From, from, the, from the point you know? of view of, of someone who engages with governments on several levels in the journalistic sphere, in the political space, I think that there exists a very, uh, a very bad status quo in the way the Nigerian government relates to Nigerians. And that is that if you want anything done in Nigeria, you have to do. You have to get it done by force. Oh wow! True. If you want, if you cannot engage with the government and speak English to them, and get a response, you have to point a gun in their face. That's a generalization, surely. To, but generally, that's but how he, it but is. But he's right. Like, history, the history of how things have worked out. This bears know, it out. If you if you write a a series of critical stories about the government, depending on where you are in Nigeria, you might get locked up, right? But if you decide, okay, I'm not going to risk getting locked up, I'm going to pick up a gun and point it at the governor instead. Okay, like what then, you, said, you know, rehabilitation. Rehabilitation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, so how do some, we change that dynamic? So the, which is why I said, can we get it back? So well, the, um, the, the, the people who are, because I don't like talking about the government as if it's this extraneous yeah. entity. The government is also yes. us. Yes, that's true. We also need to make it such that the people who we 
not just support or vote or whatever, but even the way we engage with them, it has to be from it has to be from this perspective that look, you are here to serve us. Yes. You are here to listen from to us. That, 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 you are not I here to lord it like, over us. Exactly, you are not our ruler. Yeah. And that's why I said we have to remember that we must engage them yes. at right. the right answer and be ready to provide answer. Well, time. <laughs> Treasure and I are definitely on the same page today. We are both down for action. So after the break, let's see Treasure's action.